Okay guys, in this video we're going to talk about input boxes and input boxes allow you to take input from a user. So let's see how this works. Let me insert a module here and I'm going to call it input boxes. Oops. And let me write a sub procedure. Actually, yes, let me write a sub procedure. Well, first let me show you something. Sub, I'm going to name this sub, sub find max in range. I want to show you what we already uh, talked about with input boxes. So we've seen something like this already application dot input box we've seen this so I'm just gonna copy this back over here where I declared a number of sheets as an integer variable number of sheets is an integer variable and then I assign that this value application dot input box and then I assign it whatever the user returns and if I run this, the input box has a title here, add worksheets, and it has a prompt here, how many worksheets you want to add. And whatever value I put in, I click OK, and number of sheets is going to show me number of sheets down here says 6. So this is how I got input before. Now we want to look at what exactly is this thing. and it's not very complicated but let's take a look so let's go to the object browser and put in input box and you can see there's there's two input boxes here one is in the class application and one is in the class interaction and the one we want is in application and the reason why we want is because the reason why we want this one in the application class is because if we go down here and we look at it, you know, here we are in the application class and there's the input box. It's a function, so it's going to return something. And we want to know, it's important to know what the user returned to you. And not only is it important to know what they returned to you, but you want to sort of validate what they return in, are returning to you. So if you want input, you're going to know do you want a number or a string or something else, a date or a range that they selected. And with this parameter here, this type parameter that is optional, this, this is why we want to use this application the input box in the application class is because of this type parameter down here because this type parameter when we set it it allows us to specify the only acceptable type of data that the user can return so if we only want strings then we'll put in a parameter here to say only accept strings in the input box if, they, if the user puts in anything but a string then we won't accept it and uh, that's better th that's better than this this other input box in the interaction class because if you look at that here we are in the interaction class and there's the input box there's no parameter here that specifies the type of data we want to we want the user to give to us so we would have to do our own validation and we don't want to do that and I'm not going to go over go over that but I, I'm just telling you that the input box function in the application class is the one you want to use you don't want to use the one in the interaction class because we can we have more control over what the user can give us back so let's uh, start writing let's start writing some code here and specifically just looking at this other example you know, here's the title, or here's the prompt of our input box. Here's the title of our input box. And then these other parameters here, if we look at them, 
like default left top help file help context ID um, this help file help context ID rarely used uh, they they're about help files and help topics I'm not gonna cover them left top and default well those things um, they're left and top are the X and Y coordinates on your screen uh, actually of the upper upper left corner of the input box and you can use them if you want to sort of position your input box the default parameter is the text that's displayed in the in the input box so if I go here to my code and if I put something in this default parameter if I put 66 660 no let me put it's a bad number 777 if I put that and then I put 10 10 for left and top and now I run this cancel if I run this 7777 is is the is the default number that's what that default parameter did and the left and top they position this in a certain way on the worksheet if I change this to 100 or 100 500 let me run it again and see if that positioning changed and it moved over you see how it moved over columns it so with the positioning so the positioning did change so that that's all those parameters do you know the default this is what the user sees in, as a default in the text box. These change the positioning. Um, the this one is the the help file, and the and the next one is the help context ID. But we we don't use them, so I'm just going to leave them blank. The most important one is this one, though. This this type. This is the most important parameter. That type parameter, and it's one. And why is it one? Well. If you go to the Excel VBA SQL VBA tutorial and you click through and you go to section chapter 4.2 or 14.2, a one represents a number. So here's a table that tells you the code for the type parameter. If you put in zero, that means the user is going to input a formula. If you put in one, they're going to input a number. Not that they're gonna, but that they they must put in a number. If you put in two, they must put in a string. If you put in four, they must put in a Boolean. And eight has got to be a cell reference or a range object. Sixteen is an error value. Sixty-four is an array. So let's see. We put in one. Let's see if we put in. Let's see if we run this and we put in something other than a number. If I put in high and click OK it says numbers not valid and that is the reason why we're using this application dot input box because it validates for us we don't wanna if we wanna save time writing code I didn't write any code to check check what they put in just the fact that I put in the number one over here I put in this number one is the type that means only accept numbers and then if they do if the user does input something other than a number it's going to give me this message numbers not valid so that's that's what input boxes are they allow the user to enter input and and they when you use this one the application dot input box it has this type parameter that you can set to a number that will that will tell you um, what you can accept or what you want to accept and I'm just gonna see if I could copy this and I'll put it in the code here yeah so now you know the codes a one is a number and now let's write well now 
I will take a quick break here. In the next video, we will see how the user can enter a, a cell reference and we can do something with that cell reference. We'll find the maximum value in a range that the user selects. So we'll see that in the next video. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut this one short and we'll, we'll, we'll work more with this input box in the next video.